<laughs> Maybe it'll pop back up. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't even see the video from last week. It's on there. It's so many videos. I I, I think, and it's just too much. <laughs> Did you get the invitation to my book signing? No. Okay, I'll send it. A lot of people didn't get it, but that's that's evite for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Whew, what a Monday. Crystal, is that artwork behind you? Uh, it's a wall. It's my wall. I have an accent wall in my office. That's so pretty. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, all right, here we go. Turn my camera off real quick. Um, all right. I need to turn mine off also? Yeah, you can. Okay. All right. And we are go live. You can talk to Shawnee anytime. It doesn't matter day or night, but Shawnee, giving you light and love. We're coming on without a doubt. There's nothing you can't talk about, Shawnee. Get ready to start the show. Shining and you know we're gonna talk Ordinary people and next an ordinary God Check the reference in Ephesians 5 We're walking in the light And we're living in love You know we're shining, we gon' keep it intact Cause every Monday got it coming Yeah, we coming right back uh, So act like you know We get it on and popping at the shiny show You can talk to Shani It doesn't matter day or night Shani We're giving you light and love Coming on without a doubt There's nothing you can talk about With Shawnee Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Sharing with Shawnee show I am your host, Shawnee I think I'm gonna I think I'm starting my um My one name moniker, Mika You say good? Shawnee, just Shawnee Yes, just yeah. Just Shawnee. Ooh, maybe it should be just Shawnee. I mean, because on <laughs> IG, I'm asked for Shawnee. Yeah. All right, it's just one name, right? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still debating that. That's okay. But how was your weekend? Huh? It needs to feel good, right? It needs to, right. to settle with your soul. I, that's what I said. Yes. How was your weekend? I don't know. Oh, the last day of Black History Month, we've got, I mean, I feel like, I mean, just the caliber of guests and no, and not taken away from anybody who was in the trenches with us back in 2016, but just the level, like we have leveled up. That's what we're supposed to do. Yes. And not just that, but like, I feel like Crystal story and the, and it's just a testament to what you were saying two weeks ago about cre about creating your own story. Okay. Maybe, maybe it sounds um, nicer if we say it's not, it's not the caliber of guests, right? 
in my opinion. It's not. Right. I feel like it's more so it's us, right? Like we yes. got better. We've so got tapped into the talk of, Yes. <laughs> yes. Because did you see those <laughs> graphics? I still be laughing. I was doing graphics on paper on my wall. Yeah, yeah. And I and I couldn't afford to not take the logo off. So the paper my my paper wall was at the bottom. I tried to hide it. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It was no camera back then. It was no. Camera. We gotta start somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm. It's no. Don't don't be mad about it. Don't beat yourself up about it. Like this is the story y'all asked for. Here you go. <laughs> story. Yeah. We was story. we was scrappy, but we were consistent. That's what I well, tell people we <laughs> about about being consistent. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. not, you know, like you can't. And we were just talking about this last week, and I told you I was going to send the Bev, the Be um, the Bev Smith uh quote, which is so on par oh, yeah. for the, for the guest that we have tonight, but. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Crystal. I'm about to introduce her in a minute. But mm -hmm. when Bev Smith was doing this interview and she was talking about playing the long game mm -hmm. and how she left her six-figure fashion consultant job to be her own boss. Yeah. And how she would have, and if she had given up like three or four years in, she was almost at the verge of giving up. Right. And she got you know, she got the Bravo TV show. And what do they say? The rest is history. The rest, the rest is history. Yes, yes. So like playing the long game. All right. So how was your week? Oh, I already asked you that. Yeah, I still don't know. I really don't know. Was it trying to be, you know, facetious or anything? I honestly, it was a blur. Um, I meant nothing bad happened. And uh church was good did I share like I have a I have a new role in church and no so, okay yeah um I think I've always been like unofficially on and you know in the media ministry I would do the Facebook lives and you know some video a little bit of editing here and there but right the visual side <laughs> and so I've been officially appointed as um when I have a partner in charge of uh audio <laughs> audio video right and so okay. um it's it's the hot seat all it just all i gotta say is like it's the hot seat you know how you feel when the musicians like if they hit a wrong note like everybody just kind of turn that way and look at them right <laughs> yeah. well you know this is like on an even bigger level because when anything goes you know when the mics give you that nasty feedback noise and we're just supposed to know like everything yes you know so if like a person got the mic all the way out here you can't hear them like they turn back and they look at us like I can't control that you know push your mic up and talk and speak like God sent you but did you yeah say, oh, pause did you say Put your mic up and speak like God sent you. That is what I said. Oh, I'm about to use that. <laughs> so that that's actually, that's the whisper for the night. <laughs> like, oh, snap. I told you it was going to come back to me, right? It came back. <laughs> it came back. But yeah, so uh, we were, we've been, I think this was the third Sunday back in the building. And like, I'm not even going to lie. It's been like, pins and needles kind of holding your breath making sure nothing goes wrong because we're using a lot of new things on not necessarily new technology and right. we, you know we just we're making it work right you know i had device grips on the back of the toilet is you know it's that kind of flow until we can get a new toilet <laughs> are you um hybrid mika uh, yeah, yeah, uh huh. Well, so uh, okay. yes, yes, we will be back online. I want to say, if not this Sunday, the following Sunday. But again, you know, working with new technology, we had to. Our church has been through a lot, you know. So we're back in the building, not necessarily because of COVID. Like COVID is not what kept us out so long, but we had to get a lot of renovations, 
and um, mainly a new roof. You know, our roof was just done. And when you have a, a faulty roof, right? When you have a messed up roof, then you get a lot of water damage. And when you have a lot of water damage, you get a lot of mold and when you got a mold, you know, so y'all feel where I'm going. Yes. <clears throat> and, um, you know, and then of course, uh, like everybody else, we have lost loved ones from uh, the pandemic. So, you know, it's been a rough ride. We're back now, the renovations that stage one of the renovations I'll say have been completed. So I'm pretty sure this was our, and then we lost our Bishop. And so then um, we're back third Sunday in my new role. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm feeling a little more flexible and um, yeah. <laughs> so Sunday was a nice Sunday. I don't really know what I did on Saturday. I'm just maybe preparing for Sunday. I don't know. And I don't really remember what I did on Friday either. So Sunday was great and here I am. And that's what matters. <laughs> well, I will tell you this. Um, you are being very consistent with the workouts. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. I don't think, I feel like nobody understands, but I'm sure there is and are people that understand but this has been the most physically challenging journey ever. If I could go back, all right, 24, 25, I guess is where I stopped being, you know, because that's when I got married and I guess it just kind of, you know, what they say about happy people. <laughs> so if I could go back and tell that, young woman, anything, I would say like, please keep moving. Don't stop, just keep moving. <laughs> keep moving your body, keep doing something. Thank God I was an athlete because I cannot imagine what this would feel like if my muscles had no memory whatsoever, right? <laughs> or nothing to remember. Cause right, it'd be like, what? All I had to say. If, your, if your muscles said, whoa, whoa, we don't do this. We don't do this, yeah, right. exactly. That's what it felt like today. Right. Today was arm day and my trainer thought it would be, you know, real cute to give me push-ups. It was and, Go know. ahead. I, I was just thinking of a funny story that I had told my older kids when they were like cuz Rihanna brings it up. She's like um she didn't like drinking water and I used to have to make them drink water, right? And yeah. one day I saw her drinking water one day. I think she's like 10 or 11 and mm -hmm. I said your kidneys are singing. Right. Right. Yeah. And she said that stuck with her. Like she used to tell her <laughs> friends that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, look at my sarcasm. Just stick it's it. Cute. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how, why that stuck with her. It's something, <laughs> it's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can you repeat the um can you repeat the whisper one more time for us? Uh, so last week we had, uh, are you on your own way? Mm -hmm. All right. Today. Yes, it is. It's show up like God sent you. I like that. Somebody said that to me, you know, I'm not going to steal it. Somebody said that to me. We could Jessica. All right. Jessica, prophetess, Jessica said that to me uh i think it was two weeks ago i attended her bible study her virtual bible study and um that i have shared my love my virtual love for her I'm like i can't wait <laughs> to uh, physically meet her but i'm always inspired by her encouraged by her and motivated by her you Just, talk about the jessica we had on the show at the absolutely. end of the year yes absolutely. okay yes, yes. so um, you know, we we're just talking about some hardships and, and trials and, you know, all that good stuff. And yeah, like it was, it was mixed in <laughs> with the, with the statement that she told me it was followed by like a very powerful prayer. And y'all know, I don't let people pray for me and I don't be asking for folks to pray for me either. So, you know, just if you listen in, like, thank you. So yeah, it was just like, show up like God sent you, like go in the, in the energy, right. That he sent you with, 
yeah, we, I like that. it's a confidence thing, right? It's a faith thing. It's a trust thing. And so sometimes it's like, we do this praying without a lot of action. We do this praying without a lot of confidence too. And that's crazy to me because what you praying for? <laughs> you know, like what, what would be the point if oh. there is no confidence behind that, if there is no trust behind that? And, and again, you know, like we said earlier, we all start somewhere. So please don't anybody get out of this that I said, don't pray. Cause that ain't what I said, but I am asking you what's the point. So I'm prompting you to think about it. You know, if we, if we are going to pray, so maybe this is for a certain level saint, I'll, I'll use that disclaimer. You know, if you're going to pray, you're praying because you believe, right? And so, and I understand that there are times, I don't know, one of them apostles said, like, help me and my unbelief. Y'all know I don't know names, but we do have to pray for that as well. So I thought it was Fantasia on the Lifetime movie. What? No. <laughs> Wait a minute! Did she sing "Pass Me Not, O Jesus"? Wait a minute! Did she sing "Pass Me Not, O Jesus"? Isn't it a hymn? Pause. <laughs> That's, I bro, you didn't see the Fantasia movie. <laughs> I didn't see the movie, but um, she was I'll come back and she the church doors, and she was pregnant in the movie, and she was singing that song. I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty um, sure it's probably a, a scripture, but you know, yeah. Google, I mean, if, it's gonna, like if it's in a hymn, it gotta be right. If it's a hymn, it's definitely gotta be a scripture. Absolutely. For all y'all, it's all good. Season eights out there that's right. gonna inbox right. me, to talk yeah. about what I need to know. Right. Google, Just tell us. I'm a Google me. I'm a Google it. I'm a Google. I'm it. saying, you know, this is a learning opportunity, right? <laughs> Don't turn your nose up. <laughs> I mean, and I just want to, uh, you know, I'm in this season of showing people that there is more than one true thing. Like you can have absolutely truth. You can have two truths. You just got to decide which one you're going, which one you're going to roll with. Is is that it? What? <laughs> we can, we can have two truths. Yes. Is it like a part of the whole truth? Is that how that works? Or are you saying there's no, more than one truth? There is Fantasia saying, pass me that old gentle savior, and it's a and scripture. Absolutely. I get it. I want it. I want it to be clear and I want the people to be clear. You know, you feel me? So yes, there, yes, there and is is a great conjunction. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. So much. Is it it's conjunction junction? What's my function? What yes. is that? Uh, yes. Is that three, two, Reading one? Rainbow, ain't it? Reading Rainbow with my man Lavar. It's one of them after school specials on PBS. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I am so telling my age right now. Okay. No, you're not. It is scripture. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Here we go. Mark 10, 46 through 52. What does it say? Oh, you want, okay, I got it. Well, just find that one part right there. Crystal, come on in, join join the foolery. Yes, okay, I'm gonna go back. Okay, let me introduce Crystal. So, cause <laughs> she all looking like a diva. When she came on, I already right. knew cause I saw her bio, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you want somebody to do a bio for you. Ask her. Yes. <laughs> we'll hire yes. her. I mean, just right. aesthetically, it's a really nice bio, right? I'm in. <laughs> If the wall right. doesn't tell you anything. I mean, the wall, like if the wall don't tell you that she, the sis came, <laughs> sis wasn't taking no shorts for that. Right. Right. You know, like, I'm you coming, know. like, you know, the accent wall and all of that. But no, seriously, <laughs> all jokes aside. So uh, I, I I don't know Crystal. I've never met Crystal, but I feel like I know her because I do know her husband and he got swag. And now that I'm reading her bio, I was like, Oh, that's how he got swag like that. Like, yeah. she, do you style your husband, Crystal? You know, I don't. And he does it all himself. He, Get he, out. he, loves, <laughs> he loves fashion. Yes. 
he, he loves it. He really does. He takes bold risks with colors and all of that. Yeah, he's not afraid. <laughs> Is there any other way? I mean, you go yeah. big or go home. That's the only way to roll. That's all you can do. <laughs> So, uh, so Crystal's husband is, uh, I call him engineer, uh, full time, full time engineer, part time, full time, full time engineer, full time comedian. So I, I met Marion years ago when he was in the DMV area, first getting started in comedy, um, you know, by day and having like really great uh, Auburn uh parties at his house at night uh, so that's the, so that's the that's before uh before I had two extra kids and he had his boys but we're not talking about him now he's not on my show we're gonna talk about Crystal Ellis Kendrick fashion designer and style authority um and but what what I I really I'm so glad that she's closing out that i I'm acting like you're not here. Crystal, I'm so glad that you are closing out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Black History Month this uh, tonight um, because your designs were part of the Young, Gifted, and Black uh, um, line for JCPenney this year. And so many, you know, big box realtors were really putting an effort into to amplifying the voices of Black creators and JC Penny was one of them. And I I just would love, I cannot wait to hear that story. But 17 years in the fashion industry game, yeah. uh, member of AKA uh of Alpha Alpha Kappa Alpha Incorporated. I never pledged, so I get that all messed up. I messed that all up. Mika, are you in a sorority? I am not. Oh, you like me. Do you want to know why I never pledged? Sure. Him? Do you want to know why? Sure. Cause I, I don't have any rhythm. I thought I was gonna have to dance. <laughs> I could have just put you at the back of the line. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not gonna be at the front. I'm just gonna, you know, go. No, the this back. is tough for me. <laughs> I just show the rock. That's all. Yeah, just <laughs> stroll, stroll from the back of the line. It's okay, or somewhere in the middle. Maybe somewhere <laughs> in the middle. Probably the middle is better. Yeah. 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 It's okay. Get in the back, cause you know, Jesus said the first shall be the last shall be first. So I could have been in the back. Then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Thank you so Thank much for coming you. on. Thank and, you so much for having me, ladies. I'm so and, excited to be here and dealing with all of this foolishness. But can you tell us a little bit about? Because I apologize. I didn't really give you a really, really, I didn't read your bio at all. I do give a disclaimer saying I'm not going to read your full bio, but it's no fun that tell way. Us, just te- she said it's no fun that way. Yeah, let the let the guests tell us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Crystal, in your own words. <laughs> My own words. Okay, well, let's see. Um, so I am a fashion designer. I have been a designer now for over 17 years. And it's crazy to think that so much time has flown by so quickly, um, but it has. And so my most of my career has been designing women's. Um, I've designed some celebrity brands. I did uh, Material Girl for Madonna. Um, I did Kimora Lee Simmons line. And um, I've also designed a lot of private label brands for Dillard's, um, Gianni Bini, Nordstrom's. Um, Macy, so kind of, you know, have had my finger, you know, on a lot of brands across the retail landscape. So um, I'm very passionate about what I do. And, you know, just in speaking with people, I'm always encouraging people to really tap into what you're passionate about. Um, You know, whenever you're thinking about what your life looks like or how you want it to look, you know, sometimes you can vacillate between this and that. Sometimes money may drive decisions, but, you know, I always say, you know, it's like, kind of um, initiative will get you started on anything, but it's only passion that will keep you going. Oh, and absolutely. It's only, you know, commitment that will propel you into where you want to be and you have to be disciplined. So, um, so that's a little bit about me as a designer. Um, I've been um, a certified style expert with Demand Media in LA. 
Um, I was really excited to develop the fashion curriculum for West LA College. Um, I taught the curriculum for a few years and then I'm just, I was so swamped and had so much. Um, I had to pass it off and, you know, but it was a really exciting thing to do. And so, you know, right now as we are ending Black History Month, it was such a great, great experience to be able to design the apparel um, within the Black History Month collection for JCPenney's. Because as you said, you know, all of these retailers are really trying to amplify the voice. And for me, it's so exciting. Like, it's so exciting to see this and, you know, to see it rolled out in Target and Old Navy and Gap. It's kind of like everybody has something. And, you know, that is just so exciting for me to see. So Absolutely. that is a little bit of I thank you so much for saying that. And I just think about where I was, you know, as a kid, right? Like, it, like you know, um, so to see my girls walk into a store um, and pick up a shirt that represents them, yeah. like that, that never happened to me as a kid, right? Yeah. Like yeah. my name was never on a keychain. I always talk about that. That's why I like personalized items. <laughs> and I never saw anything that looked like me on a shirt. Right. And I just was like, this is just amazing. Like, mm -hmm. I, like I, and so, so, but my question is like, when did you know that you had like the fashion bug? Like, were you always a little diva? Like, were you always? I, I always like, was. Like, I'm authentically <laughs> me. I am authentically me. And it's so funny because all of my friends know me. And, you know, it's like whenever I do something, they don't even say like, oh, my God, that's so extra. That's so, because they just know, like, Crystal is being Crystal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've always loved to design. I've always loved to sketch. But I didn't always think that it was something that I could make a career out of. And so, you know, when I first started college, College, I was going to school to be an attorney because I just thought like, you know, being a fashion designer isn't a real career. Like nobody actually does that. There was no blueprint for me to follow or look at. And so, you know, being in like second year of college and I'm like, okay, you know, third. And I was like, wait, this is not what I want to do. And this is not how I want to spend my life. And I got to figure this out because I don't want to be stuck in a courtroom trying to litigate something or whatever, you know, division of law I choose to practice. Like, I just, I can't see myself spending my life like this. And even when I was in college, I had like a part-time job at the swim academy where I would answer phones and I would be answering phones like sketching in my sketchbook while I'm trying to book swim lessons for kids <laughs> who parents calling in. And so I was just like, this is what I want to do and I'm going to pursue it. And so I left the university that I was at and I transferred to a school that had a fashion design program. And um, I went and I got my degree. And then about two years after that, I moved to L.A. And I was in L.A. for like 13 or 14 years. And it was really, really like I prayed about it. And I was like, God, like, is this the move? Like moving to I didn't I only knew one person in L.A. Oh and I hadn't God. talked to her in years. So it's not like she was a close friend. So it was really like fate stepping out. Like I'm moving away from everything and everybody I know by myself. <laughs> right. So I got there and the first two weeks I was there, I hadn't got a job and, you know, I'm trying to find something. And the third week that I was there, I was like, God, like you told me that you had me and that this was the move. And like, I really need you to open up some doors for me. And when I left, my mom has said, you know, if you get to LA and it doesn't work out, you can always come back home. Like I will fly out there and I will get you and we will drive back. So I'm praying. I'm like, God, like if something don't pop off in this next week, like I'm calling my mom and I'm going back home. Like, and literally the third week I was there, I got a call and they were like, we saw your portfolio. We think you're so talented. Like we want to hire you. So I got my first job three weeks after being there and I was gainfully employed, you know, throughout the rest of my career, you know, and towards the, you know, latter part, I didn't even, people just call me like, hey, I got this project. Hey, I got this brand. You know, the industry is so small in LA. It really becomes about who you know and how connected you are. And it's not, like my husband always messes with me. And he's like, you don't even have a LinkedIn. You need a LinkedIn. And I'm like, I know people. I don't need a LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not 
try to be recruited or, you know, through the means of LinkedIn. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with LinkedIn, but, you know, he's right. always on me about that. And he's like, but you yeah. people need to know your credentials and what all you've done. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I just think this, this is just awesome. You know, you talk about like that, taking that leap of faith and like knowing that, you know, I mean, not to say that you wouldn't have been an amazing attorney, right? Like you would have been, you, but the fashion would have still been shown yeah. um, in that. But I think, you know, um, I always go back to like this, um, uh, this uh, quote that Magic Johnson said years ago, that do something that you love. Yeah. And when you do something that you love to do, like all of the resources, all of the money, the money will follow, yeah. right? But um, doing, but doing something that is like passion is always connected to purpose, which leads me back to, uh, oh, that was a great segue, Shawnee. I'm getting this whole interview thing. <laughs> I'm getting real good at it. I don't want to my own horn, but that was really good. <laughs> But it does, lead us back. <laughs> it does lead back to the JCPenney collection. Like how, how did that fall into your lap? So, you know, it start in the fashion industry. We design a year ahead of time, okay. sometimes a year and a half. So, you know, this was in work, you know, over a year ago. And so as, you know, the George Floyd, you know, and all of these things and the social inequalities were coming to light, you know, as with many other retailers, JC Penney's was like, you know, we want to pull together this coalition of Black talent, like Black designers, and we want authentic product designed for you know, for the Black community and the Black culture. And it was really exciting to be a part of because it was really being able to give it authentic voice. You know, I think that in years prior, they were just going to the open market and, you know, just buying product, you know, and you've seen kind of these stories where places like Zazzle are doing like Black shirts but putting them on white models you know it's just like open market you know <laughs> stuff and it's just like what <laughs> no so, sense yes <laughs> no, no sense so it, it kind of started you know there and then it also was simultaneously with they were launching a young black and gifted hbcu design challenge um, for hbcu students and it's really about giving these HBCU students a platform, you know, to really, you know, design and really equalize the opportunity gaps that they're not getting at the HBCU um, schools. And so I'm really blessed and fortunate to be the chairperson of the Young Black and Gifted Design Challenge for JCPenney's. And um, so the contest for the next year will be launching in a month. And we had a lot of students to compete. Um, we came together to form a design council to weigh on all the entries. And um, if they won, they won like a cash monetary prize and also virtual mentoring sessions. And so, um, you know, it's been such an honor and privilege to mentor these young students. We try to make sure they are also being mentored by, you know, retail executives across the landscape of, you know, sometimes people think that fashion is just clothes, but there is a real business to it. And you really need to understand the strategy and business of it to be successful. You know, some people just want to do it as a hobby and show up. But I'm like, if you go do it, make some money, you know, if you're going to be passionate about it, do it right. And especially for like young black students, like let's show up in the marketplace in a different way. Like, let's talk about how you can get your clothing line in other stores. Or if you don't want to be in somebody else's store, let's talk about how you can have your own storefront or your own um, enterprise channel, you know, all of these things, like let's talk about ways to make it successful. So, you know, very excited to be a part of the HBCU Design Challenge and, you know, work in conjunction with the coalition of black designers to create product for pennies. That's awesome. That's, I, and this is something that we say all the time on this show as well. And what I say out even, just in general of how important representation means and how important it is to be at the table. So you, you know, so there's voice 
to say, no, you can't do that. <laughs> like, no, putting, no, you can't, you know, that that's not, that doesn't represent us, right? You know, um, so I think that is just amazing. I, so my, I, I want to know, but do you do any like personal or private styling for people, for celebrities? Do I do? don't do any personal styling, no. Oh. I don't, I don't do any styling. Oh, because um, I was about to see you some clients. <laughs> <laughs> I <don't just> <laughs> well. I appreciate you for <laughs> your willingness <laughs> and desire to do so. <laughs> so, um, but you talked about, you talked earlier about your collection. So did, um, where, um, can people, uh, purchase your collection or anything like that? Or like, how would they get in, be able to get in contact with you? Yes. Yeah, so you can go, um, if you want to purchase the black history month collection, you can go to jcpennies.com. Um, and there are tabs for their Black History Month on the landing homepage. You, you can also search Hope and Wonder in the search box. But I want to tell you this is good news, but it's kind of bad news. But it's the good news is that it has a lot of it has sold out. Of the course. bad news is that a lot of it has sold out. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> good problems to have, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and I and you know, I think. That also brings me into like the um, the economic, com you know, the conversation around understanding that, you know, because like a lot of times in almost every industry, what you'll hear is, is it going to sell, right? Is it going to make a profit? Is it going to do this? Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that we as Black people spend a lot of money, <laughs> like our, our dollars we have economic power that we have not even tapped into. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of changing what what shows up in the marketplace, like if we get if we get our if we if we come together on that piece, I just think that so many things could change because mm -hmm. they don't realize that we will spend money. We will, <laughs> we will spend money, however way possible like that's a whole nother. hey Mika pin that for another uh for for a topic because <laughs> it's so true though yes it absolutely is true and I think that you know like when these big box retailers and you know just even with in other industries when they really start to see the buying power you know of black America I think you know their strategies are changing but they will change even more I think that you know what we have really seen is you know a lot of these black brands being highlighted more and more there's more conversations about black designers and black brands and I really can honestly see a shift with the black community trying to really get behind these black brands and really support our community and our designers and I think that you know it's going to be incumbent upon these brands and black designers to you know create new opportunities for the people who come after us and you know what can we do to propel and move the you know the community and the culture forward absolutely absolutely uh Mika you have a question Oh, you said no. Well, I'll keep going. Huh? It's great. <laughs> uh, I is it, I mean, this is just I, I don't even know where to go, but um, so what do you think about um Crystal? Just like how would someone who is new, like just trying to get into fashion and they um they've already went to college, but they're not it, it's not, they don't have, they don't know what to do next. Like they're just, they're sitting on this degree and they have all these student <clears throat> loans and like, what, like, what would you, what, where do they need to start? I would say first thing is an internship. Internships are the best way to get your foot in the door in the fashion industry. Um, I would also say look for entry level positions. And even if it's not necessarily what you want to do, there is something to be learned at every part, every section of the fashion industry. So if you can just get your foot in the door with one of those entry level positions, then it can lead to something so much, so much more. And you never will realize how you can utilize the knowledge from that position 
um, to really, you know, get you started. When I was in college, I had an internship and my first job in the industry, I was doing like CAD textile print design and I hated it. I hated it. And God really had to fix my attitude about it. And I really had to look at it differently because at first I was like, God, I hate this. Like, why do I have to do this? This is not what I want to do anyway. Why are you not opening up the door for me to be a fashion designer? I have all of these great ideas that I want to execute. And then I realized, number one, God was showing me my heart. And number two, he was like, if you change your perspective about where you are, you will see how this is going to be a blessing to you. And when I did that with my internship and even with my first job, because in my internship, I kind of was turning my nose up. And then I just made up my mind. I was like, I'm going to be the best intern they ever had. Like, I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to show up as the best version of myself. And I really, you know, was committed to doing that. And like maybe six or seven years later, I ran into one of the ladies that was over my internship and she looked at me, she said, oh my God, I just have to tell you, you were the best intern we ever had. And I was like, it, that was so rewarding to me because I never told anybody that's what I was trying to achieve. But right. when she said that to me, it was so rewarding. And then as I grew in my career and like really became a designer, there was so much stuff I learned in that internship and in my first job that I was able to really glean from and to really use in my career. So, you know, I just say, don't snooze on any opportunity that doesn't look exactly like what you want it to be, because it can lead to something else. The It's about getting your foot in the door. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think that and for anything, you know, just beyond, you know, fashion, um, internships just definitely also prepare us for um, just the workplace in general. Yeah, like, you know, like it's certain things that that degree is is not going to teach you. Like, you didn't learn, exactly. like, I'm pretty sure like all those preachers and pastors and clergy people that went to seminary, they did not learn how to do how to do a sermon on Zoom. Right. right? <laughs> and now look, and, 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 right. And so th these are things that um, you don't realize that you need. I look back. So I've been an entrepreneur now going on seven years. And I am so glad that I worked in corporate for all those years because I know the business side, like every, everybody has to create the creativity side, mm -hmm. right? That, that comes, you, you know, that comes with probably, you know, minimal effort. Uh, you, you just creative because we come from a creator. That's what Mika always says. <laughs> right. And so, you know, some of us are tapped more into their creative side than others, but we all are creative. And, but it's that business acumen yeah. that will make or break your, your, your dreams in your business. And if you don't get the business side, that's with any industry. If you don't know the bit, how the business works, right. it's not, you are going, you're going to fail, but you're not, you, but even it's all about recovery. Right, right? right. Being able to fail and get back up and recover and make the mistakes and figure it out. Right. You know, we joke about how, how crazy looking my graphics for this show was seven years ago, but at the end of the day, we still did it, but it was the behind the scenes that we fixed. And, you know, like the things that no one, you know, no one knows about, like, you know, me saying, um, every 10 seconds, because, I didn't prepare. I thought I could wing it. Right. I thought I was so creative. I could just come on here and wing it. And I had this elder <laughs> tell me, no, baby, you got to read your notes. <laughs> You got to have some notes. <laughs> That's the great thing about failure is that failure teaches you how to win. You know? oh, come on, Crystal, with the tweet. <laughs> no, it really does. Like, seriously, like, I've failed a whole bunch of times. <laughs> 
And, and I'm telling you, like, it is directional. Like, it teaches you, you know, I think that, you know, for dreamers and entrepreneurs, like you're talking about, you know, part of it, you know, you do have to be creative and a part of it is having this business savviness. Um, because if you don't have it, it's not to say that you won't get to your dream, but you're going to take the scenic route, meaning it's going to take you a long time to get there, you know, and you could have avoided all of it if you would have, you know, had things in order and, you know, business savviness about what needed to happen and I think you know an, a, another part of that is kind of the fear of the unknown like sometimes people don't want to invest in themselves they don't want to invest in learning about things because they don't know like is this gonna pop off for me or is it not gonna pop off for me you know and I think that that in itself kind of stops a lot of people from dreaming it stops a lot of entrepreneurs that should be you know having successful companies you know, from being able to do so. And I think ultimately just as a culture, you know, as a community, we have to really understand that it's kind of like fear is not the enemy of faith. Like it's really sight. Sight is the enemy of faith because sometimes it's hard to see beyond what you can see. So it's hard to see that you're going to win. It's hard to see that, you know, I may be starting small right now, but this is going to pop off for me and become something really, really great. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, even in the Bible, it says do not despise small beginnings. And so, you know, to anybody who, you know, wants a career in fashion is trying to get started you know, I just say study, learn, glean all you can, invest in yourself, invest in courses, but in co courses like with real experts, because what I see on Instagram, people like certify themselves as an expert and have had a boutique for like three days <laughs> or, <laughs> or like, you know, I, I have been designing for one week, but I'm going to tell you how I did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Speak on it. Yes. Oh my gosh, this is so good. But I love that that um when you talk about uh, can you repeat that again? The site is the did you you didn't say enemy. What did you say? Oh, I said a lot of people will say that like fear is the enemy of faith. Like faith, right. you can't operate in the same, but I and I said it's not really that fear is the enemy, you know, of faith, it's sight because it's, it's what you see that often stops you from believing in what can be. And that is more true the older that you get, you know, because you have more life experiences, you've seen more things. And so it really kind of becomes this, like, it's hard for me to believe that life doesn't stop at 40. It's hard for me to dream again at 45. Like it's hard to start a new career or discover, you know, what I'm passionate about the older that you get. So yeah, that's so true. I think we get more critical as we get older. Yeah. That part. You know, like we look at it from a critical eyes. Like I always say, senior citizens are, they crack me up. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> yeah. Me and my yeah, husband. My day, right. Like chill yeah. out for a little bit. Just, I get it. You have a whole lot of experience, but, um, just maybe this time it'll be different. <laughs> That's that faith part. Yeah. Earlier, right. you know, you were saying like losing or failing will, will teach you how to win. I think the caveat for that is if you don't quit. Right. Absolutely. 100%. Yes. 100%. Yeah. It's really easy to quit. It's really, it's really easy to quit. It I is. just want to say that because especially as a therapist, I get a lot of, you know, young clients where they're like, I'm out, I'm done, no more. And I'm like, that's so easy. Yeah. It's yeah, so easy, yeah. right? I don't know yeah. how to quit. I really don't. There are I, times I wish I did, but I don't know how to quit. It's, it's the same. I always say I have one gear and it's go. That's it. <laughs> right. That's all I know how to do is right. just go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You know, I, don't I think it. it's definitely a testament to <laughs> just like, you know, just, you know, where we come from and like, the, you know, so many different things, right? But I will also say, like, I know that hoping can be painful at times, but sometimes that's all I all I have is hope. Like sometimes when I don't have anything else, mm -hmm. it's hope, and the hope keeps me going because I know, like, I know this is not in vain. Like I, I, I just know that it's not. Yeah. Right. Is there a part of you sometimes where you just be like this? 
this better not be this can't be in vain right like it can't be like levels yeah yeah it's definitely hey. levels to to the confidence yeah. right yeah. like you know but yeah. i'm like but but it seems like every time like i'm on like like i'm at i'm at a breaking point mm -hmm. god gives me a breakthrough yeah every single time yeah That's like e like every That's single time yeah yeah like i even think about i was gonna quit after this show after the first the first year of this show yeah because the first year of the show by december you know i was misplaced <laughs> <laughs> i was doing the show in the library i was ready i was like um, I can't do this anymore. Like I was like literally borrowing money to keep the show running. Like, right. And to the point, I was like, I'm not, why am I asking somebody to pay for the, the radio bill? And this does make, this makes no sense. Right. And then um, two weeks before the last show, a former guest just inboxed me and says, I want to support your ministry. That's when I realized that the show was a ministry because up until then, just thought it was a hobby. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm keeping it a hundred. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is a ministry. She said a hundred dollars. The show stayed on for four more months, <laughs> right? Like I was like, I was just so like, whoa, right? And then that very last show in 2016, when I was sitting there like I, and I don't, I think, I don't even remember. I don't think you were on me. I think you didn't feel good. I think you didn't feel the good. The last show? The I very last know, show. No, because that was the end of the semester. <laughs> yeah. I think you were, you was like, I'm tapped out. Can't do the show. And yeah. I, I literally wanted to not do the show either. And like that whole day, I was praying that the, um, that this special guest would, would cancel. Like, mm -hmm. I, like I was literally praying that she would cancel. Mm -hmm. She did not cancel. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, y'all. Like, hey, Yolanda <laughs> is my, we're, we are friends and prayer partners to this day. I did the show. It was two days before, it was like, it wasn't two days, but it was like two weeks before Christmas. It was so cold that I, I wasn't at the library. I was using the hotspot on my phone because mm -hmm. my girlfriend didn't have Wi-Fi. And my hotspot was keep it because we was on the radio. I needed Wi-Fi, right? Yep. I was doing the show from her dining room table with my hotspot. If I moved an inch, it would, <laughs> the Wi-Fi would go out. Yolanda did the show from her bed, suffering from all types of ailments and illnesses. And she had started this. That's when Periscope was hot. Mm-hmm. And she started this online ministry, online church ministry. And all of these people, Mika, there was so many people on the blog talk radio call in mm -hmm. that we maxed out the numbers because I had the cheapest. Wow. <laughs> and they was calling in to tell her how blessed she was that they were for her ministry. She didn't know mm -hmm. these people. She mm -hmm. thought she would just speak into the air. <clears throat> Just like her husband was her, was, was the, was the congregation. Okay. And she would come on and, and preach and teach on Wednesdays and was not getting any feedback, but she said, God told her to do this. She was going to do it. And that last show, I said, well, I was about to quit tonight, but I guess I'll be back in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when people don't give feedback oh yeah it's like you you have to really be talk about confidence right you really do you have to really be confident you have to really believe that that is you know your ministry your mission yeah. to do because in that silence you know like just thoughts you can the rumination just is like let's go Am I effective? Are they hearing me? Do I belong here? The, do you get the message? You know, am I making sense? Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Like so many different things pop up when you don't get that feedback. So 
yeah i mean that's a nice little tie-in right like just show up like the creator sent you don't worry about it noah exactly. noah everybody thought noah was a fool until it rained right. Every so come on mika you bad pre preaching right they now. did right like they, they laughed they was still <laughs> crazy true. rain it was like wow. <laughs> they yeah. was like you building an ark for rain yeah all right, right. Bro. <laughs> yeah i always say like i can imagine how how noah may have felt you know i know obviously it didn't last long where he or he did it anyway right but yeah just you know you're like all right, hey all right lord you just sent me to be a mockery huh and, <laughs> and that's not like funny. nah that's not it but keep on yeah keep on. that's so. so great that you um last week i was mentoring one of the hbcu students and they said to me um how do you like decide what you should do when so many people are in your ear telling you you should do this or you should mm -hmm. do that? And I told her, you have to learn to silence the noise. Absolutely. Because there will be a lot of people around you telling you what they think you should do. And when it comes from your parents, it's from a place of love. It's genuine love. Like they want to see you do good in life and they want to see you excel. Uh, when it comes from like your peers, when you're designing, you know, people are telling you what they think is best. And just even in terms of society, like people try to tell you what you should look like, you know, what size you should be, how you should do your hair. So I feel like at every point of life, you have people trying to tell you how you should show up and who you should be. And so to be successful, you know, in any area of your life, whether it's your mental, your emotional, like you have to learn to silence the noise and to like really align with yourself and really be able to honor what you are feeling and like what you want for your own life and you know because there's always going to be a lot of noise around you always absolutely oh my gosh this has been such a great um conversation crystal how can people get in contact with you if uh they want you to come and speak or because you're a excellent speaker i just want to say like she got like a whole bunch of talents and a mentor and teacher and all of that how can people get in contact with you uh, well thank you so much that was so nice of you to say um you can find me on instagram and also facebook um at i am crystal ellis um on all social media handles and you can find me there um or you can go to the website which will launch on march 1st um, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I am Crystal Ellis uh, awesome, Crystal awesome. with the K. With the K. Yes, Crystal with the K. Don't get it twisted because <laughs> it's Mika with an I. Don't be spelling her name all wrong. But Mika, <laughs> where can people get in contact with you? And can you repeat the wellness whisper for the week for the week again? Yes, meet Mika M I K A Fresh. Meet Mika Fresh dot com. And I am meet Mika Fresh on all the places. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the whisper for this evening was show up like the creator sent you. Love that. that. I love that. This is the Sharon with Shawnee show, highlighting ordinary people working for extraordinary God, sharing love, light, and life. We are, um, we will be back next Monday. Um, we will kick off Women's, Women's Month. Women's oh, history. Yes. Love yes. it. But yes. we're kicking it off with a man. No, you know, it's, it's all good. good. It's, it's all good. good. I'm gonna ask him what he think about it. All right. The Reverend Leland Core. Reverend Leland Core will be on the show next Monday. Is that Thank irony? You all. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. It is so funny, right? <laughs> Thank you. God bless you and peace. Nice meeting you, Crystal. Likewise. So nice to meet you both. Thank you for having me.